Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we taste, explore, and explain the wonderful world of fine wine. This is episode number five of our series about the prestigious sparkling wines from the French region of Champagne, Champagne. And at the moment, we're looking into the different styles of Champagne wines. Last time, we looked at what is the difference between a vintage and a non-vintage Champagne and why it actually matters. And today we're going to be looking at two interesting names that you may come across and see sometimes on special bottles of champagne, which are Blanc de Blanc and Blanc de Noir. We'll also see that most champagnes are neither of those things and why. Let's actually go. We did discuss in much detail the characteristics of the seven grapes that are used to make champagne in France. In our previous episode, it was very complete about this grape topic specifically. So I invite you to watch that one also after this one, as this is a bit of an extension, a complement, a different angle that we're taking today. We're going deeper to consider more specifically these concepts of Blanc de Blanc or Blanc de Noir or BDB and BDN as we sometimes nickname them. So in champagne mainly there are three grapes that are used even though seven are allowed. Really the main white wine grape variety that is used to make champagne, the only one that's really used significantly is of course Chardonnay. And that's because it's by far the best and most consistent white grape for making sparkling wine in general. A Blanc de Blanc Champagne is a champagne made using exclusively white grapes to make it. Therefore in 99% of the time a Blanc de Blanc is simply 100% Chardonnay Champagne pretty straightforward. To remember it, it's pretty easy as well. Blanc means white in French, as you probably know, even if your French is not that fluent. If you're a little bit into wine, you've probably worked this out, if only because of Sauvignon Blanc, the white Sauvignon Blanc. So Blanc de Blanc means white as in white wine, made from whites as in white grapes, wine made from white grapes. Pretty self-explanatory, will you remember this? Now why it matters is because, as we've seen last time when we talk about the grapes of Champagne, the red grapes that are Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier also used to make Champagne give a very different expression to the wines, as we'll discuss even further in a minute. Chardonnay is much more restrained, it's more acidic, it's more citrusy, it's more zingy and with those delicate tangy notes of lime in particular. There's one word that the people of Champagne would use for it that summarizes them all and that's the concept of tension when you're tasting the wine. Remember this one, taste tension. Understand more minerality, more acidic tension on your tongue as opposed to ampler and oilier texture. A lot of people like this more restrained, some would call it more elegant style of champagne because the flavors are more delicate and also because this style when it's executed well is rarer. So it's finer, it's rarer, therefore it's more thought after. Only a few rare terroirs with a lot of limestone most of the time can give those very fine and acidic yet balanced champagnes using only Chardonnay. No artifact, no blending, just Chardonnay. It's hard to make and requires great vineyards. Generally Grand Cru and Premier Cru vineyards like the ones in the Côte des Blancs sub-region of Champagne. Check out my overview of the geography of Champagne to learn more about the different areas and what they produce. So Blanc de Blanc or some Blanc de Blancs are often considered some of the finest champagnes, at least the most reputable ones of them. And the, and the most famous names here are the Croc Clos du Menil, a legend, an extremely rare wine made from a walled vineyard in that Côte des Blancs, which is one of the most expensive champagnes you can buy at over $1,000 a bottle. Another classic, very famous name here is Tetinger's Comte de Champagne, which is a very reputable and thought after Blanc de Blanc prestige cuvee that you can get your hands on at around $150 to $100 a bottle for a recent vintage. For more affordable examples but excellent options to discover the BDB style, look out for Paul Roger's Blanc de Blanc, or even better value is Palmer Blanc de Blanc. Really, really good uh, for what it is. And let's look into, into what is a Blanc de Noir. Mm. 
And you might have worked it out by yourself by now, but Blanc de Noir champagnes are the negative of Blanc de Blanc. Champagnes made exclusively from red grapes because Noir means black in French. Yes, we call them black grapes, not red grapes. Anyhow, a Blanc de Noir is a white wine made from black grapes. It's pretty self-explanatory as well. It's not always the case in the world of wine that wine terms are quite obvious like this. If you understand a little bit of French, now you can understand what this means. So Blanc de Noirs are made from Pinot Meunier and or Pinot Noir, generally a blend of those two grapes, but some can be made with only one of them, which tends to be more 100% Pinot Noir than 100% Pinot Meunier, when only one of them is used. Again, as we saw with our video about the grapes, red grapes for sparkling wines give as I was mentioning, an ampler body, perhaps a more joyful texture as well, a little less tension and austerity in the tasting, the more playful aromas as well of red berries, more pink grapefruit notes as well, rather than the stricter lime characters. So I think Blonde Noirs are a little more approachable, at least at a young age, and that's why some people like them more. And I personally love Blonde Noir style perhaps even more. But for the same reason some people like it, because it's a little more approachable, it's also less highly regarded, generally speaking, at least at an entry level. But I personally love to go for a Blanc de Noir when I find an affordable one, because they're really interesting and they're playful and they're good, simply. Something to have in mind, really. If you've come across one, try it and maybe see what if you like it. Although, to make an extremely fine and refined and balanced top Blanc de Noir wine, it's probably probably even harder and rarer than a top Blanc de Blanc because fewer houses give it a go at trying to make those top Blanc de Noirs while there are quite a few producers that make excellent Blanc de Blanc. And perhaps this is why, and I'm actually pretty sure this is why, the other Clos wine made by famous Brown Krug, we mentioned one earlier, the Clos d'Ambonais this time, is a 100% Pinot Noir wine that is extremely rare and even more thought after and more expensive than the Clos du Ménil Blanc de Blanc that we mentioned. The Clos d'Ambonais doesn't sell for $1,000 a bottle, but more around $2,500 or $3,000 a bottle. One last fantastic trait of Blanc de Noir as well is that with aging, they develop this typical forest floor, slightly earthy and savory flavors that we know and love from aged Pinot Noir that you get from great aged Pinot Noir from Burgundies over time. You can get this clearly from aged Blanc de Noir and it's absolutely delightful, I personally find. Chardonnay doesn't give that. A few other very thought after Blanc de Noir wines and champagnes include illustrious cuvee names such as Boulanger Vievine Française or Bilcar Salmon Clos Saint Hilaire. Yes, most champagne wines are blended, combining white and red grapes. And this is why you do not see those mentions Blanc de Blanc and Blanc de Noir on labels or wine specification sheets very, very often. Even most of the most famous prestige cuvées, the Dom Perignons, the Louis Roderer Cristal, Ace of Spades, just to name a few very famous ones, all of those are blended. And that's for a pretty simple reason. Blending white and red grapes generally allows for a more harmonious balance, combining the tension of whites and the playfulness and healthiness of the red grapes. It's somewhat easier to make a balanced and more complete champagne because winemakers have more blending options. They can play around with different blending options and more variety of expressions to play with. The blend is one of the key to making great champagne, so it makes sense that more blending options result in perhaps greater wine, so it's a bit easier to make more greater wines blending different grapes. Yet if you know you like one style better than the other, or if you like exploring more further the diversity in different styles of champagne, Clearly tasting and exploring Blanc de Blancs and Blanc de Noir styles is an extra dimension to have in mind, an extra level of joy, of understanding, of satisfaction that you can get from the extraordinary diversity the world of wine has to offer. And now you know. And the more you know, and let's leave it here for today. Thanks for watching. In our next episode, we'll round up our six part series exploration of champagne wines, talking about the prestige cuvées and single vineyard champagnes in particular. Pretty deep, pretty specific, very interesting. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel for this and I will see you soon in the wonderful world 
of wine, champagne, fine and rare wine in general on the Output Alti Wine Exchange channel.